Before we start, I would like to thank you all for 474 subscribers. Thank you so much for listening. On to the story. So keep on going with your silly dream by Piter on AO3. Read by Lily6645. This fic may include suicidal thoughts. Thank you so much for listening. Chapter 37 Trauma dumping and taking out knockoff Elsa. And getting a concussion. Oops. Summary. Izuku and gang takes out the ice monster. That isn't a monster? Either way, Izuku escapes, then passes out. Shinso forces him to come over and why is Yamada looking at him weird? Blearily, Izuku squinted around him. His hands and toes were numb, and the cloth strap of the All Might mask was beginning to hurt the top of his ears. There was the festival, the villain. His hearing, oh god, he actually talked to people? What was he thinking? How was he not frozen? Oh, he looked up from his battered red shoes to the boy in front of him. Todoroki had ice crusted on him and a fair share of cuts. Todoroki moved him then. He was shivering. Why was he shivering? Why didn't he just... You wanted to know, the boy panted, why I didn't use my fire. Izuku blinked sluggishly, nodding. He'd talked. The damage was already done. But maybe he could stop making it worse? I'm the product of a quirk marriage, and my purpose. It was spat out bitterly, like keeping it on his tongue too long would poison him. It was to surpass all might. It always has been. My father is a cruel man, using training as a way to beat me up. Izuku nodded in understanding. No sense sane person would launch a vigilante into a crumbling building. So yeah, he had a feeling Endeavor was a piece of shit. My mother couldn't stand him, but she was stuck with Endeavor due to his status and wealth. It drove her insane. She couldn't stop seeing my father in me. He moved a hand to the left side of his face, right over his scar. She poured boiling water over my face. Because of that man, I will not give him the satisfaction of using his quirk. It was said lowly, full of resentment. I will win and survive with my mother's half only. I don't need him. A beat of silence ensued. Are you stupid? Izuku smacked a hand over his mouth, only succeeding in launching the plastic mask against his nose. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Just, it's your quirk, not his. The boy stared at him blankly before turning back to the fight. Izuku forgot about that. It was hard think it, to think over the sharp pain in his head and the trauma dump. The monster was black with soot, but didn't have a damn scratch on him. It had to be 
the scales then. Looking closer, it was more ice plating than actual scales. There was patches that melted slightly at Bakugo's explosions before they were, were quickly reformed. The blonde boy had already exerted himself. He couldn't melt the Kai on his own. But if Todoroki attacked with his fire at the same time Bakugo blasted him, then just maybe... Todoroki, if we want to live through this, then... The what the hell are you crazy bastards doing? Bakugo screamed towards their hiding spot. Which was for the best, considering the ice began beginning to climb onto Izuku's shoes and fingers. He broke the thin shell with his pocket knife, jumping up. Todoroki, you have to use your fire if we wanna incapacitate that guy! Look at you! You're freezing! The boy glowered at him, stepping closer. I told you, Yahoo, I don't need his. Izuku's fist connected with Todoroki's nose with a crunch even Izuku could hear. It's not his quirk, you hear me? It's not! You're being an idiot! You don't have to do a damn thing! thing that he says right now you need to be a hero help take this guy down it doesn't matter who you got your quirk from it matters what you do with it not him you and right now you're choosing to put everyone here in danger because of your damn daddy issues! Izuku breathed heavily, glaring down at Todoroki. The white and red-haired boy is staring at him with wide eyes and an open mouth. One hand was attempting to stem the blood from his nose, the other in a tight fist. If he looked close enough, he thought he might have seen tears in those eyes. Todoroki nodded. Okay, okay. Izuku swallowed, holding out a numb hand. Good. Now, let's help this guy stay down. With a hand far more cautious, Izuku thought possible from the shocked boy. His hand was taken. Izuku took a deep breath. Pocket knife gripped tightly in a hand and waiting for an opening. Why hadn't the heroes come yet? Had the villain in the audience seriously been that bad? Maybe there was more than one? More importantly, who had co coordinated it? He peeked again. Uraraka and Ponytail Girl were busy defending the unconscious pro and the other yellow-haired one, plus the invisible girl. That is, Bakugo, Todoroki, Mina, and Red Hair was attempting to fight the guy until Izuku could distract him and disappear. After that, both Todoroki and Bakugo would blast him. It was a sloppy plan, but it was the best chance they had. Where the hell was all my- There. The light of Bakugo's explosion so close to his face had made it flinch back. Izuku jumped off the slanted ice he'd climbed onto and slammed his pocket knife into- its left eye. Just as he predicted, 
he was subsequently chucked to the side. He had slammed against ice for the second time that day. He didn't black out this time. How could he when his whole vision was illuminated with explosions and a lot of fire? He made eye contact with Todoroki. The boy was the picture of composure at first before a small yet feral grin broke across his face. Izuku glanced back over the, to where the smoke was clearing. There was no longer a monster. There was a little boy curled onto his side and unconscious. Immediately, Red Hair and Uraraka ran to him while Bakugo began to curse up a storm. Todoroki stared in confusion and a little shame. Wait, was he the ice bastard? What the hell? Izuku glanced to the side and sighed in relief. The kid wasn't expli explainable, but either way, the vigilante had a way out and back to the civilians. Todoroki and Bakugo combined blast had melted a good chunk of the ice around the exit. Hopefully, they could take it from here. And hopefully, Izuku could get out before the adrenaline wore off. Izuku squinted at the ceiling, groaning in pain. He winced at the sound of his own voice, echoing above the ringing that had never faded from his left ear. At least it was dark now. How long had he been out? He clumsily fished his phone out and away from the port portable charger, hissing in pain at the light in it produced. He dug in his storage full floorboard, pulling out his old sunglasses, then looking back. Apparently, he'd been out a while. It was 3.17 at midnight, or technically in the morning? Whatever. He was in no shape for vigilantism tonight so he should just sleep after he he stared at the phone what was he doing he needed to uraka and shinso he totally forgot he blinked at the many 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 missed calls and messages he quickly sent an apology and assurance he was okay to both his friends before sitting his phone down. Time to get back to, to who the hell had the audacity to call him. Shinso. What a dickhead. Izuku picked up anyways. <laughs> Deku, whatever your last name is, you've got some damn nerve. Shinso's voice shook slightly and Izuku was forced to move his phone to his good ear. What the hell? You, you disappeared for hours after a huge villain attack with tons of casualties, and all you do is text? He paused briefly. My fault, gang. Sleeping. I'm fine. Night. Izuku wondered if this was the same Shinzo he'd only ever seen smile three times. Where did all this emotion come from? Uh, uh, uh. No, don't ever. I thought you were dead, Deku. Really sorry, Shinzo? didn't mean to. I was just 
really tired and forgot people liked me now. The teen whispered, words pleading together. It's like he was trying to talk with his tongue tied to the bottom of his mouth. Ugh. Now I feel bad. The purple-haired boy grumbled. It's fine, but don't do it again. Ever. Okay. You don't sound okay. I'm good. Please come over. I, I can't. Just come over anytime I'm hurt. Oh, so you are hurt then. Shinso could be a real asshole sometimes. Can I bring stroke? Yes. Fine. The journey from Izuku's apartment to Shinso's was a blur of pain, but somehow he was there and already being mocked. Shinso took a long look at Izuku decked out in his sunglasses and the Galaxy Wolf hoodie he got for free with the matching Galaxy pants. Oh, he forgot shoes and socks. Whoops. At least he had stroke. Dear God. Izuku glared as Shinso took a picture. Fit great. Don't what's funny, Izuku slurred. Yet yeah, no, the shorter teen was well aware how atrocious his sleeping clothes were. Sure, sure, sarcastic bitch. Let's just go get Hazashi up. Nah, he's sleeping. We can't just... Shut up. Izuku was too tired to argue more, so he opted to unsteadily following behind Shinso. He felt nauseous, but trucked through it. Zot oh The taller boy smirked before pulling out his phone and walking in. Izuku stayed at the door, peeking in to see there were two people in that bed. One was, of course, Yamada, judging from the blonde hair. The other was carefully curled into his side due to the cats and bandages still covering him. Aizawa and Yamada were cuddling. Ew. Shinso snapped a picture before poking at the blonde. The voice hero gasped, jerking his head towards Shinso. Hitoshi? Deku finally answered. I made him come over. The pro grinned and slipped out from Aizawa carefully. Is he hurt? I, I'm okay. Shinso's being dramatic. Izuku mumbled as if this, his head wasn't throbbing and he could hear totally fine. You know, like a liar. But he's tired of taking advantage of Shinso. He's lying. I am not living room. Let's not wake up show. Hasashi interrupted as their voices began to climb in volume. They quickly obliged, sitting on the same couch Izuku had previously been nursed back to health on. Hasashi squatted in front of him, face a little off. Izuku couldn't quite put his finger on why. Okay, sunglasses off. Why? You're slurring your words. And I'm assuming you have some sensory delight. I want to check your pupils. 
He shrugged and removed them, causing the blonde to wince. Yikes. Yeah, listener, your pupils are two different sizes. That's concerning already. Fuck this, Izuku grumbled, gaining a surprised laugh from Shinso. He hadn't ever heard the boy laugh, let alone be the one to garner such a reaction. Izuku hoped he'd hear it. Stop. This had to stop. He couldn't keep doing this. This leeching and freeloading. It was why he'd moved from his mom. And it had been why he would have to move from here too. Why couldn't Izuku stop taking? Kid, we're gonna need to call your parents. No! Izuku immediately shut down. I, I mean, uh, they're busy. I'll be fine for a little while. Wait, alone? Uh, I, I mean, you know, to walk home alone from here. Back to my loving home. You're horrible at lying, Shinso pointed out. Please stop. Izuku's shoulders slumped. Just lay down here for a while. Sleep a little. Gonna have to wake you up at six, though. Isn't safe for you to sleep more than two hours or three at a time. Sound good, kid? The pro hero asked, standing and ruffling Izuku's hair. Okay. Izuku felt sick. He knew it wasn't from the concussion. That is the end of chapter 37 of So Keep On Going With Your Silly Dream by Piter on AO3. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this, please go support the original author.